The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, June 3rd, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell, and we got markets accelerating higher. What's new, right? Same old business. S&P's up 19 points, just shy of 3,100, trading at 3,096. NASDAQ futures up 39 points at 96.86, that approaching all-time highs. Dow futures up 233, 25,934, so we're right at about 3,100 in the S&P. We're right at about 26,000 in the Dow. We have oil negative 26, 20 cents at 36.61. The 10-year yield above 0.7 percent, trading point, not trading, yielding 0.71 percent. And the gold contract pulling back a bit. Currently down ten dollars at seventeen twenty-four. We'll start things off. We'll start it off with the chart of the S and P. And why not? Look at that acceleration, folks. You even back it up to a week ago. We were at twenty-nine sixty-five for some context on the full run from thirty-four hundred almost to twenty-one seventy-four. And check out this movement we've had. Only two red bars. I think we're going on eleven days. There's three, five, eight, ten. Shame on me. Fourteen. 14 trading days, is that right? Three, five, seven, ten. Okay, out of the last 14 trading days, folks, we have two red bars. That is quite a trend. As Tom has been saying, it's creeping. It's creeping higher. Start things off, and we'll jump over to the headline of the morning before we hit the charts. And you got ADP payrolls. So that extending some of the gains, that number coming out just in the last half hour. Private payrolls down 2.76 million in May. A staggering number in any other time, except for when the expectation had been 8.75 million. The total comes on top of a plunge of 19.6 million in April, the worst in the survey's history. So 2.76 million, not immediately clear the discrepancy between the 2.76 that came in at and the 8.75 that economists had been looking for. So that number coming out, we'll put this back on a shorter time frame, five minute bar. There you see a little bit of volatility when that number spikes at about 810. We trade from 3,091 within a few points of 3,100, currently trading at 3,094 on the S&Ps. Jumping back, we'll jump to the indices. We'll start it off with the Dow, 25,917. You see all the indices getting a little bit of a pop on that ADP number, far below. I mean, that's a 6 million job miss. And of course, this all ahead, we're about 48 hours away from non-farm payrolls on Friday. So maybe that putting a little bit in the market saying, hey, maybe Friday's number's not going to be bad, as bad as they're thinking as well. I believe Friday, they're looking for a decline of 8 million, somewhere in line. But they were looking for a decline of about 8 million today. And that number coming in shy of 3 million. NASDAQ 100, kind of just been bouncing around at these levels since about 9 or 10 last night. Even we were right here at about 730. S&P's. 3,094 inching higher for the entire overnight session. Here's where we ended tra the trading day yesterday. Quite a nice little acceleration in the last half hour even, Tuesday trading. We trade from 3,057. We finish at about 445 at 3,078. And we're now approximately 16 S&P points above that price level. There's your gold contract. Gold sells off on that ADP number from about 1730, down about $10 to 1722. The lows at about 5 a.m. of 1717 in the August contract. Here's your crude chart. Crude was above $38. We still got some volatility, though. If you thought the pain was over and we were not going to trade negative in terms of trade in a, in a downward acceleration, how about this? From 2 a.m. until just shy of 8 a.m., you go from above 38 to below 36. We're currently trading at 36.66. We get the EIA numbers two hours from right now. I'll be on the air with Tom for those. We'll get some volatility at 10.30 on the crude number, I'm sure. And the Euro US dollar now above 112 at 112.04. I mean, this Euro move, the dollar move, put this on a daily. 
Look at that acceleration. Talk about a one-way move from 108 to 112 in the euro. And we're talking about really, I mean, we were at 108.70 on May 25th. It's June 3rd, and we just added, we're up to over 112 now. You back it up to where we were, and that is around March 9th at 114. You see, when the market fell apart, you saw the euro go up to 114. Talk about some volatility in these forest markets. Back down to about 106, right? What is the low here? 106.30 about? And now we're trading at 112 in that euro. In terms of what else you have happening in the market, headlines out there. Mortgage demand from home buyers jumps 18%. Quite a number out there as interest rates set in on the record low. Mortgage applications to purchase a home rose 5% for the week and were a stunning 18% higher than a year ago. The mortgage market, the home market, been one of the fascinating stories of what's going on uh, during the COVID quarantine lockdown. The market just persisting with lower interest rates, people at home. Uh, maybe you don't need all those open houses to be purchasing a new home. The average rate, this a big factor in what's going on, 30-year fixed mortgage hit another record low, remarkable, 3.37%. Remarkable, you can lock in that rate for 30 years. What are you going to be paying in the year 2050 for your mortgage that you signed today? 3.37%. There you go. Uh, Snapchat. So Snapchat launches a new dynamic ads automatically for brands in a global rollout. Snapchat jumping over to their shares this morning. Pretty cool. Brands are going to be able to automatically update whether it's their price, the availability. I'll jump back to the story in a moment, but we get Snapchat up about 12 cents. Not really anything dramatic, but in the long term context, we go from right where we were. So we're right back to where we were before the sell off. You go from 20 to 789 and we're right back at almost 20. And so what they talk about here, they're extending a type of automated advertising to companies, dynamic product ads. Seems like I read the story early, early this morning. So this is, I, I'm surprised that uh, this is gonna be the norm in terms of it will allow businesses to effectively upload its catalog to Snap before products are automatically put into a template and then shown to relevant app users. And here's the key, if a product's price or availability changes, the ads dynamically automatically update in real time, less admin for the advertisers. Automated process, folks. Computers doing the business. Uh, British apparel brand Topshop, Adidas, online fashion retailer Fartech. They've already been beta testing this for Snap. One of the things I always talk about is uh, can you monetize? Can Snap monetize? Can Twitter monetize? They've had some problems. Uh, maybe that's a key that, that will allow them. Snap, I use Snap. It's a, it's, a, it's a great product. But they have had trouble monetizing it to the likes of uh, the king of the world in social media, Facebook. Talk about an acceleration from 220 on Facebook to 137, all the way back up to about 240. Went open a little bit lower this morning on Facebook. Now, Facebook dealing with their own set of woes in terms of social media. The president, Zuckerberg, his employees, but Facebook persisting. And one thing they do well is monetize the billions of users they have on their platform. Jumping back to other headlines I have out here, we had mortgage demand. So Amazon, Amazon plans summer sale for June 22nd. So they're already thinking, how do they jumpstart sales? Maybe there's a lot of pent up demand. I mean, pent up demand. Hasn't everybody just been ordering stuff on Amazon already? So Amazon is gonna jumpstart sales for everybody who's been ordering everything on Amazon. But nonetheless, June 22nd, we'll see what happens. Amazon climbing towards 2,500 and that chart talk about a giant we'll look at that acceleration right near the highs of 25 25 stay tuned folks we'll be coming back after the break see what else we have on tap for wednesday trading i'll be right back Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&Ps right now positive by 18. We're within about a couple points of the highs we had just after that ADP number at 820 this morning. Just kind of ticking right under 3,100 in the S&Ps and right under 26,000 in those Dows. The Dow, for some context of where we are there, from 29,543, we're now above the 618, even on the Dow, approaching uh, the next level on the Fibonacci retracement, a 786, you're talking above 27,000 on that index. Boeing having a lot to do with the, the Dow, up a little bit this morning, a bid ask above 156, the collapse of Boeing from 350 basically to 89. You're still flirting with this whole consolidation down here of 150 to maybe 120, call it 115, somewhere in that area. Other stocks with action, uh, getting back into the payroll number first, actually, before we hit the stocks with some earnings today or last night. Breaking it down a little bit further, so the number comes in at 2.76 million. The job losses were especially deep in large businesses, reported a decline of more than 1.7, excuse me, 1.6 million. Manufacturing took one of the biggest hits, 719,000 workers lost. The reported total well below the 8.75, as we talked about. May's count also marked a precipitous drop off. So 19.6 was the number in April. The impact of the COVID-19 crisis continues to weigh on businesses of all sizes. Yeah, I would not uh, disagree with that statement. The report's done in conjunction with Moody's Analytics and serves as a precursor for the monthly non-payroll. So that number tomorrow, uh, excuse me, Friday, Friday morning, non-farm payrolls. Okay, nonetheless, that was just breaking it down a bit. Now, speaking of specific stocks, Zoom with their numbers last night, they delivered in a great way. Their shares, talk about some volatility, talk about some high expectations. Zoom reported revenue growth of 169% from the previous year, first quarter earnings report on Tuesday after the bell. You had earnings of 20 cents a share, revenue of 328 million. Now check it out, they were looking for nine cents and they were only looking for 202 million. I mean, crushing it out of the park. The company also significantly increased its guidance for the fiscal year. It now expects $1.21 to $1.29 on 1.78 billion in March, it had forecast 42 cents maybe on about 900 million. Uh, just an amazing beat on their numbers, but guess what? You better be knocking it out of the park. 
when this is what your stock chart looks like for the current fiscal year, you're talking about calendar year, I should say. Uh, you're talking about a run from 68 up to basically 208. Now, here's the remarkable thing. You want to talk about uh, absorbing premium. You traded from 208 up to above 220 instantly on the news. You actually traded under 200. The conference call began 5.30 p.m. Eastern time last night at a low of about 197.50. And guess what? We're within a dollar right now of where we closed at yesterday. Now, the one-day expected move on Zoom, you were dealing with about 23 $25 maybe of expected move, basically meaning if you were buying an, an at the money call for the day and an at the money put for the day, okay? So you have a put and a call, you have exposure in either direction, you're buying volatility. What is the market pricing in implied volatility? And the market was priced in about $25. So each side was going to cost you about $12.50 to be bullish. If you just want to be bullish, you can be bullish for $12.50. You want to make a bullish play on options for one day, uh, $12.50. If you want to be the person absorbing that premium on both sides, man, you might collect it all. We're within about 50 cents of where that finished at yesterday. Uh, we'll give a quick plug to our man Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. Folks, if you haven't checked it out, the program fast market 11 a.m eastern time they're talking options great program talking about defined risk volatility in a big way earnings season great time let alone all the action we got non-farm payrolls coming up friday and the vix will tie that into volatility still a relatively high vix in a market that is not quite um maybe deserve a vix over 30 anymore as things seem to be calming down you know we got a we just got an adp number that had six million extra workers than they were maybe thinking, right? We were supposed to miss by like eight million. We missed, uh, we came in at 2.8, so we only lost 2.8 million jobs. They thought we were maybe gonna lose 8.2, and the VIX is sitting at 27, a little bit of a decline, some long-term context. Might be a time to uh, absorb some premium. We're coming into summer trading as well, right? It's June, 85.47. It almost doesn't feel like it because things are so different. People have been working from home. Kids have been home from school. Uh, uh, so there is this transition from technically, now we're in summer, especially in Florida, because we've had beaches, we've had beautiful weather for a while, but as that weather heats up in the Northeast, kids off school, you could just see things calm down, things look well, maybe we're opening back up, and uh, hopefully what is going on in the country as well calms down as well, because that is just a bit much right now senseless violence, protests, you got to be heard, and hopefully there's systematic change of what's going on in terms of police and the way um, they deal with minorities and everything going on there and understanding and listening. Uh, but violence is never the course of action and destruction as well. But this mix, 85.47, back to the market, 26.54, just amazing to see Zoom after all that action. I uh, We talked about it with Kevin Hinks. I mean, they had a $25 expected move. That's an opportunity to absorb some premium. But guess what? It makes sense. I mean, I, was, I, I mentioned on the program yesterday, you put this on a five-day chart. It had a one-day expected move of $25. Meanwhile, you had gone $25 just from Monday morning up to Tuesday morning, practically, from 180 to 215. So volatility, we'll see where Zoom goes today. You might see it just race out of the gate one way or the other. Okay, jumping around to some other stocks making headlines because we have a bunch of them. Campbell's out with their earnings. The food producer reported quarterly earnings, 84 cents a share, 9 cents above estimates. Revenue also beat forecast. Campbell raised its full year guidance, noting an increase in demand across all its brands, all its brands. Quite a statement, CPB is their symbol. And they've performed relatively well compared to the market during this time. Campbell's up a bit to 52.40. We were as high as 54. The conference call beginning this morning at 8.30 when I came on the air. Some context on Campbell's. There's some volatility for you. The market in February up to 57, down to 42. And we're right in the middle of that range right now at about 52 for Campbell's. Canada Goose out with earnings as well. They matched analyst forecast. They lost 12 cents a share. Revenue came in above estimates. Canada Goose also said the pandemic-related negative impact on its business would be most pronounced during the current quarter. Traditionally, it's slowest of its fiscal year. That would be a lucky benefit. Uh, let me put that back. Goose is their symbol. Those big Canada Goose jackets. Uh, from above 30 to 1294, we're going to be trading positive this morning. Zooming it in, there's your action on their numbers up to about 2272. Not bad, right? They they match earnings, they beat on revenue, and they say uh, this quarter is going to be the worst, but this quarter is usually our slowest anyway. 
So Express Retail, they're out with their numbers, $1.55 a share they lost for the quarter, wider than the 47 the market was looking for. Revenue misses as well as the pandemic closed the stores. Express is not providing guidance. I mean, it's almost like the usual hits, right? If you're in retail right now, you're missing on almost anything because your stores are closed. You're not presiding, providing guidance because you're not exactly sure what's going to happen. EXP, is that there's EXPR? That's what, that's what we there's your action yeah from 2 to 187 on that news not a good not a good uh not a good delivery in a company like express for some context yeah talk about already in trouble folks from 624 to 450 down to a dollar 27 watch out for that company might be going bk okay s p is still hanging up about 17 points at 3094 stay tuned folks we'll be coming back to finish up the program see what other equities we have making moves this morning Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps trading at 3,097 right now, just ticking up near session highs. Maybe we'll get a 3,100 print before the end of the show. Jumping back, so I wanted to cover the gold contract real quick because you have gold pulling back as the markets chugged higher. We were at 1761 Monday. We got a little bit of a sell-off, I say it. 
1755 to 1735 yesterday and on that ADP number as the market chugs higher gold trading a little bit inverse from 1730 now trading at 171280 and of course we get that crude EIA number at 1030 this morning crude hanging tough at 3669 jumping back to some equities with headlines this morning Cody, so the cosmetics company, is in talks with Kim Kardashian West about a possible beauty products collaboration. Believe Cody's the one who teamed up uh, and purchased a majority stake in Kylie Jenner's um, uh, uh, cosmetics company. Excuse me. Cody, not really having a huge effect this morning. Tiffany, so Tiffany, they traded dramatically lower yesterday on the news that the takeover by LVMH may not go through. Tiffany shares? Kind of extending those losses. Yeah, so we were trading at 128. You spiked to 111. We're trading at 115 on the news that LVMH may not be in the business of buying Tiffany because of the dramatic slowdown of COVID. And I wonder what kind of... Uh, what kind of clauses are in that contract they signed for a back out? Lyft, so Lyft traded higher yesterday after the bell after they said rides booked through its platform jumped 26% in May compared to the previous month. Demand has begun to rebound with Lyft's ridership figures rising for seven straight weeks. The May figure, however, 70 cent below, 70% below year ago levels. So I'm gonna pull up Lyft as we end the program here. One thing to be aware of, when you talk about percentages of growth, off of a very small number, it can be very deceptive, right? Let's say they had 100 million in revenue and they go down to 10 million in revenue, which is very possible in this type of a deal. So they go from 100 to 10. Well, they could have 100% growth and they would go from 10 to 20 and they'd still be down 80%, right? So be careful of those percentages, but Lyft trading higher on that news to 33.20. Stay tuned folks, live programming all day at TFNN. Larry Pesvento coming up live with Trade What You See for the